This short video is a way to demonstrate the importance the mine action and housing land and property AORs are giving to the critical issue of land rights and mine action. This video demonstrates the collective efforts being made by our two AORs to not only break down the silos, but also ensure protection mainstreaming. There is some excellent work being undertaken in various humanitarian operations in building linkages between mine action and housing land and property specialists. But this collaboration and linkages need to be systematized and scaled up to ensure collective protection outcomes and ensuring mine action and land rights are truly contributing to the peace and security, human rights, and sustainable development goals. Land is fundamental to the enjoyment of human rights, right to food, right to adequate housing, rights of the indigenous people, women's housing, land and property rights, and many others. Land is also a driver and trigger of conflict in many regions across the world. Additionally, land will increasingly become a scarce resource and add to the mix of other global challenges we face today. Urbanization, massive population growth, migration, increased food insecurity, and climate change. As pointed out by Christelle, land is fundamental to peace and security, human rights, and sustainable development. And the housing, land, and property area of responsibility thanks the mine action actors for prioritizing land across your various operations and taking leadership on the issue of land rights. Thank you. Mine action is first and foremost about releasing land. It is about transforming inaccessible areas into accessible and exploitable land. It is thus important to have as much clarity as possible on land rights and land ownership before undertaking clearance operation. Mine action, by definition, is humanitarian. And we should always ask ourselves if the land is given back to the intended beneficiaries and those most in need. To be sure, it is beyond the mandate of mine action organizations to fix land problems. However, there are a range of actions that they can take to ensure they do no harm and respond to the land issue they encounter. I will focus on a few specific actions, which are mainly targeted at mine action organization. However, some of them are also relevant for other actors, such as donors. First, it is important to liaise with humanitarian and development organization dealing with land issues and to take into account land rights when setting mine action priorities. Mine action organizations should avoid clearing land that is disputed if there is equally high priority undisputed land that needs to be cleared. Second, mine action organizations should raise awareness about land rights with affected communities and involve them in identifying clearance priorities, informing local communities about the land rights and hearing from them about community priorities, concerns regarding land use and perception of tenure security will reduce risk of land grabbing. If this is deemed to be too delicate for a mine action organization, they should partner with NGOs who are able to engage in this work. Third, mine action organizations should ensure a formal and participatory land handover process. It is important to involve local communities, intended beneficiaries, government representatives, and so on in the handover and ensure that the release of land is widely communicated to those absent. Fourth, we need to recognize the special needs and vulnerabilities of women. After conflict, female-headed households are the most vulnerable to land grabbing. We need to ensure they are included and actively participate in surveys and consultation in order to take into account the specific needs and priorities. Fifth, it is key to report on the developmental outcomes of mine action. Success and impact of mine action should be measured in terms of development of agriculture, infrastructure, and economic opportunities. It should not be limited to the number of square meters cleared or the number of mines destroyed. In addition, post-clearance assessment should be more frequent and systematic as it allows examining if originally intended beneficiaries are actually the occupants of cleared land. And last point, donors should include land rights in tendering and contracting processes. Statements of work should include land rights consideration to be taken into account by bidders and contractors. To sum up and conclude, I would say that mine action is not a purely undertaking, technical undertaking. It is related to broader issues and it often takes place in complex environment. Mine action can be political.